Hi everyone, so there'll be two videos in for this which will be on indices and scientific notation. This first video will be on the indices and then I'll upload another one on scientific notation. So first of all we'll start with indices, so index notation. If n is a positive integer then h to the power of n is a product of n factors of a. So when we're looking at index notation we have, you'll see there in purple, a to the power of n. So that a is called the base. The power part of the n has lots of different names. Most common is index, power or exponent. But depending on where you are, um, which textbooks you look at sometimes, which syllabus you're a part of, that name will change. What that means is we have a times a times a and that continues on depending on what that value of n is. So if it was a to the power of 3, it would be a times a times a. We'd have a three times. And so it'd be three factors. Now we have negative bases. So a negative base raised to an odd power is negative. And then if you have a negative base raised to an even power, your answer will be positive. So I've just got a few little examples here to show you how that works. So the first one, we have negative two in brackets to the power of four. So what this one means is, if we're going to write it out, you'd have negative two times negative two times negative two times negative two. And it's four times because that little power is a four. And if you work that out, you will get 16. So remember to, because it's an even power, we're going to have a positive answer. Now with this next one, we have to be really careful. And this is where you'll see this note at the bottom here, but when using a calculator, if your base is negative, make sure you put brackets around it or use your brackets correctly, because otherwise your calculator will give you a different answer because it uses your order of operations. So with part B here, we've got negative two to the power of four. Because our negative two is not in brackets, our order of operations says we have to do our power first. So this will actually be negative and then two times two times two times two, which will give us negative 16. So you have to be really, really careful with your negatives. And that's one thing that I found in classes with students is, and especially with their calculators, if they're doing negative two to the power of four, they're more than often, more often than not, will forget to put the bracket around the negative two. So they'll get negative 16 as the answer when the answer should be 16. So you just got to be really, really careful. Now, see, I'm not going to do the working out for this. It's the same as part A, just one more negative two and um, added on, which will give us negative 32. So remember, as I said, when you have a negative base and the power is also odd, you will get a negative answer. And the last one we have negative times negative two to the power of five, which will be negative. And we know that negative two to the power of five is negative 32. So the answer will just be 32. And it's that simple. Okay, index laws. So index laws are laws that work for lots of different things. Here I've got letters or variables but it works with numbers as well. So if we have a to the power of m times a to the power of n, the law is a to the power of m plus n. Next, a to the power of n divided by a to the power of n. So remember, a divide we can also write as a fraction. So a to the power of m divided by a to the power of n. Hopefully you guessed that will be m minus n. Next one down, a to the power of m in brackets to the power of n. With this one, we actually times our powers. The next one down, a, b, all to the power of n. What happens in here is that everything gets the power applied to it. So the a has a power of n and the b has a power of n too. And that's the same if it's a fraction in the brackets. So it will be a to the power of n divided by b to the power of n. a to the power of 0 is one. So this is just a blanket law. Just learn it. Just know it. Anything to the power of zero is one. Anything. A million to the power of zero is one. Anything that has a power of zero just equals one. Then a to the power of negative n, this is one where we can rewrite it because we often don't like negatives in the powers. It makes it harder to work out. So what we do is this equals one over a to the power of n. So we would make it a fraction and we take that negative out and the a to the power of n goes on the denominator. 
Okay, a few examples here just to practice so you can see the different rules working before you go and practice some of your own questions. So A, x to the power of 5 times x to the power of 3. So that's just that first law, which will be x to the power of 5 plus 3, which will be x to the power of 8. B, we've got p to the power of 6 over p to the power of 2. Once again, the law, we minus them. p to the power of 6 minus 2, which is just p to the power of 4. C, this one, look at the rule. We multiply it, so it'll be y 2 times 3, which is y to the power of 6. D, 2x all to the power of 3. So this one, remember, everything has to have the power of 3 applied to it. So it'll be 2 to the power of 3 times x to the power of 3, which is 8x to the power of 3. This works the same for e. Everything has the power of 4, including the 3. So it'll be 3 to the power of 4, c to the power of 4, over b to the power of 4. Everything gets that power of 4. So which will be 81 c4 over b4. f7 to the power of 0. Remember, is 1. Anything to the power of 0, just 1. And then 3 to the power of negative 2 is 1 over 3 squared. So remember, just make it a fraction, take the negative away, which we can then actually write as 1 over 9. See how it's so much easier to work out when we make it a positive index. So that negative 3 to the power of negative 2, you go, I've got no idea what that is. But as soon as you change it to the 1 over 3 squared, easy, 1 over 9, done. H, 3 to the power of 0 minus 3 to the power of negative 1. So do this in steps. 3 to the power of 0, remember, is 1. Minus 3 to the power of negative 1. So this is just actually 1 over 3. We don't need to write to the power of 1 in the denominator there. 1 minus a third is just 2 thirds. I, we've got 5 over 3 to the power of negative 2. So a few things here. Remember, we're going to apply that power to both things. Now, there's two ways you can go about solving this. I'll do both, and then you can choose which one, whichever one you feel most comfortable with. So the first way will be just to apply the negative to both. Now, we want to get rid of the negatives, which means wherever it is on the fraction, we actually flip it. So this will be 3 squared over 5 squared. So when you have a negative power in your denominator, you can then just move it to the numerator and get rid of your negative power, which would be 9 over 25. The other way you could have done this, and it's probably my preference actually to do it this way, is I like to get rid of the negative first. So I would have flipped the fraction first, so I would have made it 3 over 5 squared, then applied the squared and then get my answer. But as I said, it's up to you which way you prefer. As I said, I prefer getting rid of the negative first, so flipping my fraction, and then applying the power. All right, this example here expressed in the simplest form with a prime number base. So it's pretty much what it tells us to do. We want a prime number base. So if you think about this first one here, nine to the power of four, nine isn't a prime number. So we've got to think about how else could we rewrite 9. So it uses a prime number, and that would be 3 squared. So 9 we can actually rewrite as a 3 squared, and then we have our 4. And then we can simplify that, so it would be 3, and remember the law is 2 times 4, which give, will give us 3 to the power of 8. B is the same. 4 is not a prime number, so we've got to rewrite that, so that would be 2 squared times 2 to the power of x. 2 is a prime number, so this is working. So remember when we times and we add our powers, so it'll be 2 plus x. And we can't do anything else with that. Make sure you don't just put 2x, it's got to be 2 plus x. They're two different things. C, so once again, our base we should be able to see will be 3. So it'll be 3x over 3 squared y. So this will be 3x over. 3 to the power of 2 times y, and then we can minus the powers because it's a divide. Then the last one, 25, we can rewrite that as 5 squared. 
Now, when we do our multiplication here, we have to multiply the two by everything in that power on the outside. So it's two times x minus one in the brackets, which will give us five to the power of two x minus two. A really common mistake here is people do the two x, but they forget to times a one by the two as well. So they'll get two x minus one, which will be incorrect. All right, so that's pretty much index laws and index notation. It's really simple. It's just laws, just practice, 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 and you'll be able to do it.